Hey, most high in Christ bless Israel. What's happening? We back with a nun, a nun. Go the distance across the waters, teach our people this is a mission. Trail tribes worldwide, this is redemption. Yeah, yeah, this is redemption. This is redemption. We go the distance across the waters, teach our people this is a mission. Trail tribes worldwide, this is redemption. Yeah, yeah, this is redemption. This is redemption. We go the distance. We go the distance. I'm on a flight. I'm on a flight. How about the plane? What is you saying? Israel unite. Think it's a game. Now we ain't playing. We here to fight. Can't run away because we've been called. This is our plight. Oh, uh, got the kingdom in sight. Oh, uh, pack on my Bible to build up disciples. The acts of the apostle, we back. Oh, uh, choosing the ministry over necessity. We got our people on track. Oh, uh, passport now. Nah, I need a new one. Ain't got no more room to stand. Oh, uh, exhaust our voice. Preach the kingdom till our lungs collapse. Oh, uh, I got so much to do. I got so much to prove. Taking my body, putting it under subjection. Till eat them under my boot. Lay the target, cast it down. Yeah, angels got them in scope. Raising up the 12 across the globe. Now your freedom revolves the distance Across the waters, teach our people This is a mission Trail tribes worldwide This is redemption Yeah, yeah This is redemption This is redemption We go the distance Across the waters, teach our people This is a mission Trail tribes worldwide This is redemption Yeah whatever reason the challenges that we've had we go somewhere and we plant but we've not been able to water
Shalom, brothers, shalom, sisters, Bishop Nathaniel here. You know what day it is. That's right. It is Shout Out Tuesday. It's Shout Out Tuesday. And you know how I love to read your letters of exhortation and your donations of support. But before I do that, I often love to cover a little bit of our hidden history. So get your libations, get your diet food, get your comfort food, get whatever you need to snack on to relax yourself to enjoy today's episode. All right. And I'll be right back with today's commentary. So sit back, relax, take a look at today's hidden history. Crania Egyptiaca. Observations of Egyptian Ethnography. All right. This was published in 1844. All right, going over to page 66. Number eight. Negroes were numerous in Egypt, but their social position in ancient times was the same was the same that it is that it now is that of servants and slaves so who were the servants and slaves in Egypt the israelites that's what they're saying the israelites a treatise on physical geography this book was published in 1850. I'm going over to page 297. Thus the Jews are a people who have ever, according to the prophecy, dwelt alone, without intermixing with the nations to this day. Now this separate race all descended from brown ancestors. For Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob must have been as dark as Mar Yahanan, if not darker, exhibit every shade of color from the black Jews of Malabar, of whom we have such an interesting account by Dr. Claudius Buchanan, to the rose and lily complexion of the Jewess on the banks of Elbi. These are the converts. These are the Edomite converts, the rose and lily complexion Jewesses. All right, we, I'll start here. We need go no further than the Jews of Southern Spain and compare them with those of Holland and Northern Germany to perceive a very striking difference. The Spanish Jew is always dark complexion and his hair is uniformly black. While the German Jew is often as fair as any German, these are the converts, Visigoths, and has light or red hair with blue eyes. The various shades of color observable among the Negro or African race tends to the same conclusion. Along the coast of Guinea, which is low, marshy, and hot, we find jet black complexions. And this is the very country from which the which American Negroes have been derived. So they're telling you that the American Negroes, which many come from Guinea, also are the same people as the Spanish Jew that is always dark complexioned, which are descend from the Jews of Malabar, a dark descend from dark skinned Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob must have been dark. The image of the black in Western art. Okay, watch this. Page. The page is 45, page 45. Relating to the people of Spain, including 11 drawings. 11 drawings of Moors from Granada. Although Spanish Moors, the word Moors means blacks, were allowed free exercise of their religion after the fall of the kingdom of Granada on, Janu on 2nd of January, 1492, Isabella I of Castile, this is Spain, ordered on the 2nd of February, 1502, that they had to choose between baptism and exile. And the Inquisition was put in charge of their spiritual welfare. 
Whitets drew the Moors, drew the blacks, who had chosen baptism and stayed. So if you got baptized in Christianity, you were able to stay in Spain. The Moriscos, the Moriscos are Muslims that were forced to convert to Christianity. The Moriscos, carefully recording their features and individual characteristics. One of his drawings shows the street dress of a Morisco noblewoman, the others men and women, the latter in clothing worn either at home or in public. Now watch this. You see what right here says blacks, right? We got to turn the page to get to the next sentence. All right. Well, this is a drawing here, but the sentence continues here. Blacks, and in parentheses, it says morenos. This is the same word that our Latin brothers and sisters use today. Moreno. It means black. Okay. Some books will say that the word moreno means swine, pig or evil. No, Moreno was a Spanish word that always meant black. And this word was used on the Spanish Jews, Morenos, okay? So blacks, Morenos, were clearly distinguished from Moriscos. These Moriscos were Muslims forced to become Christians. Moriscos who were forbidden to have slaves for fear that they would convert them to Islam as recent converts, conversos, okay, whether Jewish or Muslim. So these conversos, whether Jewish or Muslim, were often suspected of heresy and relapse, meaning you might go back to your original religion, okay, faith, belief. One of the whitest drawings shows a black slave carrying wine skin. The inscription states that in this manner, the Moors who have been sold carry wine and goat skins in Castile, that's Spain. If they run away from their masters, they have to work thus and wear chains. The slave is dressed in a red blouse with frayed white breeches, meaning pants. His legs are naked but for steel colored shackles, one of which is attached by a chain to his girdle. Black slaves are also shown in drawings, which illustrates a simple but ingenious device for filling barrels with water. I'm gonna show you both these slaves. Remember, they were, if we did not become Christians, they forced us to become slaves and exiled us. Look, okay, I want y'all to see the more, the Moreno, the Jew. Do y'all see that? And that's picture 29. Over here is picture 30. Okay, so now remember what we had just been reading. You may have forgotten already. Where it said, uh, we had to choose between baptism and exile. Okay. Then, more mm, who had chosen baptism and stayed. Okay, now these were not, they, the ones that chose baptism and stayed, they were given their liberty. Okay. Watch, let's go on now. All right, here is page 31. Not page, I mean, picture 31. I want you to look at the picture. He's on a mule, this is a mule, a donkey, black man, okay? Frayed white top with red top underneath it. These his breeches. So, I wanna see what they say about picture 31.
Okay. A third, a third drawing represents a black drummer in festive dress riding on a mule. In this way ride the army drummers in Spain when the emperor rides into a city. So we had to, those that stayed behind that chose baptism and became drummers. We had to ride before the emperor and bang the drums. It goes on. He wears a white garment embossed with silver over a red violet undergarment, a blue cap with a white feather and earrings and plays on two kettle drums on the flanks of his animal. As you forgot already, this is Spain. These are the blacks or the Jews that had accepted conversion to be baptized. Now I'm going to picture 149. Anonymous, King Fountain in Lisbon. Lisbon is in Portugal. Portugal is right next to Spain. They call Portugal and Spain the Iberian Peninsula. All right, let's take a look. Look, you have black Jews entertaining Edomites. These are Jewish people. These are real Jews here. These are Jewish people that became Christian. Okay. I want you to look at these white people. These are Edomites that, beca that became Christians. They were Jews that became Christians. You said they're taking a young boy away. Probably bust him upside the head with that bat there. Okay. Now, look here. You got this black man riding on a horse. He became a Christian. See the cross on his jacket, this black jacket. I want you to notice the black hats and the black capes. This is going to play a very important part in the continue as I go on through the history with this. Notice you have white people here. These are Jewish people. These were converts from, from the Visigoths and all like that. Okay. And notice all the black people around. You got Edomites here. There's a black man during the being burned alive. Spanish Inquisition. Black man here, or black woman here. Yeah. Now notice the two Edomites there talking to her. Now these, now you may say, well, how do you know the difference between the Muslims, the Muslim blacks, and the Jew blacks? Well, I'm going to cover that in a moment. We're going to cover that in a moment. You see the whites on the horse, and you got the black man as their servant carrying a stick. Jews, Visigoths, and Muslims in medieval Spain, 1994. I'm going to page 167. All right. Isaac Alfasi, or Faisai, Faisai, see the hard sound, Faisai, was asked about those who wish to make clothing, such as the Genina, or Jainina, Jainane, meaning uncertain, made of linen, as is yet the custom in many places in Spain, or to make a kind of line or fringe on their cloaks, their capes, which is called in Arabic, halai, adornment or ornament. The question was whether this was permitted because of the biblical prohibi prohibition against mixing threads. If such a garment was of wool and decorated with linen and sewn with silk, the rabbi replied that if the threads were actually bound or sewn together, as in garments called ali or atras, possibly an error for atriza embroidery, it is forbidden. So you couldn't have the fabrics interwoven like that. That's what the Bible makes mention of. But let's go down. Here's the point. Uh, remember the question was, how can you tell the difference between those Jews and M Muslim Moors? Watch this. The Alomad al mohad ruler Abu Yusuf Yaqub, 1184-99, is said to have introduced at the end of his reign, end of his reign, I believe it is, an innovation with regard to the shukla or shikla cloak-like garment, 
of the Jews because they were dressing like Muslims and even like the most noble of them in a manner which made them indistinguishable from the servants of Allah. So you could not tell the difference between the Jew and the Muslim. They dressed the same. They looked the same. Therefore, Jews were henceforth required to dress in the fashion of mourning among Muslims, dark blue or black. And the size of the sleeves they could wear was limited, only long enough to reach the feet. And they were required to wear black cloaks, probably the telesan and black caps. Remember, I just showed you in the book, okay, about the blacks that became Christians. They had to wear black caps and black cloaks. I know you forgot. I know you forgot already. Remember, I showed y'all this earlier. Black cap, black cloak. Black cap, black coat on black people. You see that? Nature Knows No Color Line by J.A. Rogers. Pay attention. I'm going to start here. Nature Knows No Color Line by J.A. Rogers. Page 123. White says, an interesting gradation of all shades down to the black is exhibited by the Jews. Especially dark were the Jews of Spain and Portugal. The Portuguese Jews were very dark, says Pritchard. The Duchess D'Abrante's wife of Napoleon's ambassador to Portugal said that the Jew, the Negro, and the Portuguese could be seen in a single person. So dark were the Jews, especially of Portugal and southern Spain, that many whites thought all Jews were black or dark. Boom. What you going to do with that? A Social and Religious History of the Jews by Salo Whitmeyer Baron. Late to Middle Ages, an era of European expansion, 1200 to 1650. This was pr printed in 1973. I came across this. I thought it was very, very interesting. I'm on page 170. Now notice it says Iberian downgrade. Remember, the Iberian Peninsula included Spain and Portugal. So the same peninsula. Watch this. While professing Jews were threatened with speedy execution, the moment they set foot on Spanish soil, converts to Christianity in other lands, including Moranos, returning to the fold, were welcome as residents in Spain. The conversion of an occasional Jewish visitor from North Africa was often performed with great solemnity, although everyone must have realized that such newcomers would merely swell the ranks of unwanted new Christians. I was curious about what is this unwanted new Christians. See that number 10 there? Under, this, under Iberian downgrade, there's a number 10. Let me just get in close. There's a number 10 beside unwanted new Christians. And we have to go to page 456 to explain that. What is the unwanted new Christian? Page 456. Okay, Iberian downgrade. Number 10. Ibero or Iberian Africana. These were blacks from Africa that were in Spain and Portugal. So let's go on back. Unwanted new Christians. All right, now let's go here. Before long, developments in Spain directly affected neighboring Portugal. Yet, just as the Holy Office had considerable difficulty in establishing itself in that country and could not start large-scale operations until 1547, so did the doctrine of limpieza. 
the doctrine of limpieza. Limpieza is a Spanish word that means purity. Purity. I'm jumping down just for time's sake. Ultimately, the Archbishop of Evora decreed that descendants of Jews on the paternal side, the paternal side is the father's side. Let's read that again. Ultimately, the Archbishop of Evora decreed that descendants of Jews on the paternal side, the father's side, should forever be excluded, excluded from government and church. While those on the maternal side, the mother's side, should be disqualified only to the seventh generation. These provision, provisions for purity of blood. So they wanted a pure blood race dealing with church and state, meaning white folks only. You could not be black on your father's side. If you were black on your mother's side, you were excluded only until your seventh, seventh generation. And it, that's a, that is a real doctrine. The doctrine of limpieza uh, de sangre. Sangre is Spanish for blood. The doctrine of limpieza de sangre, meaning purity of blood. That's what down here you got purity of blood. Of blood is de sangre. Purity is this word here, limpieza. Limpieza de sangre, and meaning blood purity played an important role in the modern history of the Iberian Peninsula. It referred to those who were considered pure, old Christians, without recent Muslim or Jewish ancestors, or within the context of the Empire New Spain and Portuguese India usually to those without ancestry from the American Indians, Aboriginal Asian, or Aboriginal African people. The Critical Review or Annals of Literature. This was published in... Was that 1783? All right, I'm going to page 140. Pay close attention. Pope Nicholas V, in that famous bull, meaning they wrote what's called bulls, they wrote bulls for expulsion, and watch what the other kind of bull was, by which he granted the unknown world, that's Africa, and America to the Portuguese and Spaniards expressly permitted and ordered the Christians to reduce all infidels, meaning anyone that did not accept Christianity into slavery. See that? To reduce all infidels into slavery. So they did that to the unknown world. That was in Africa and in the Americas. Whoever did not accept white Jesus was forced into slavery. That's why, I know you forgot already. That's why, back to this book here, The Image of the Black in Western Art. Let me go to it. Did y'all forget this? Blacks did not, that did not accept Christianity was reduced to slavery. Boom. Blacks that did not accept Christianity was reduced to slavery. This was in Spain and Portugal. That's where it began. Okay, then they spread out throughout Africa and the Americas. I'm on page 60, watch this. We're gonna discuss Picture 41. Look at picture 41. Pull back. Let's see what it says. Picture 41. Above the inscription are four blacks. Mm. One, two, three, four. Four blacks. Mm. Should we read it again? 
Above the inscription are four blacks, one of them shooting with a bow, the others digging for gold with hoes. Did the artist wrongly show American natives as black? No, because the first American natives, they were black. They didn't get washed, whitewashed until the whites started intermixing with them. <laughs> Did the artist wrongly show American natives as black? Or are we dealing here with early evidence of the slave trade? The fact that the inhabitants of the New World wear gold anklet bracelets and earrings indicates that the first hypothesis is correct. What was the first hypothesis? Where was it? Uh, that the first American natives are black. Look at this. Bow and arrow. All right, so don't forget. Do not forget Pope Nicholas V in that famous bowl by which he granted the unknown world to the Portuguese and Spaniards expressly permitted and ordered the Christians to reduce all infidels, meaning unbelievers, into slavery. That's how we got into slavery in the Americas. Professor Springle, Springle devised the, his, the history of the Negro trade carried on by Christians into two principal periods. The first from 1443 to 1645, and the second from 1645 to the present times. Okay, meaning when this book was published. King John II in 1492 expelled all the Jews to the island of St. Thomas, that's on the west coast of Africa, which had been discovered in 1471, and to other Portuguese settlements on the continent of Africa. Wait, 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 King John II in 1492 expelled all the Jews, expelled all the Jews to the island of St. Thomas, which had been discovered in 1471, and to other Portuguese settlements on the continent of Africa. And from these banished Jews, the black Portuguese, as they are called, and the Jews in Luango, which are despised even by the very Jews, uh, which are despised even by the very Negroes are descended, meaning the Negroes are descended from the Jews that kept the commandments, okay? So they're one and the same people, but these Negroes did not keep the commandments. Wow. Lest We Forget by Velma Mayer Thomas. The Passage from Africa to Slavery and Emancipation. All right, let's take a look. Mm, I'm going to start here. Uh, this was before the invasion of the Europeans. Before Africa was theirs, she belonged to the black man. It was not until the 15th century when European powers entered Africa first for gold, then for slaves, that the face of Africa changed. Now, many books discuss the 15th century, which is in the 1400s. What actually occurred in this era? Well, let's take a look. I've got a book here entitled Critical Reviews. The Critical Review or Annals of Literature by a Society of Gentlemen. All righty, then. This was published in... Uh, I believe that's 1783. Was that 1883? <laughs> Let's go inside the page. 140. All right, I'm on page 140. Let's start here. Pope Nicholas V and that famous bowl. When it talks about bulls talking about a papal bull or papal bull which was a edict which was above the king pope nicholas v in that famous bull by which he granted the unknown world to the portuguese and spaniards 
expressly permitted and ordered the Christians to reduce all infidels into slavery. This was the beginning of the transatlantic slave trade. Let me say it again. This was the beginning of the transatlantic slave trade. The Christian church orchestrated the slave trade. Okay, it was Pope Nicholas V. All right, let's go down. Professor Sprengel divides the history of the Negro trade carried on by Christians. Wait, wait, wait. The slave trade was carried on by who? Christians into two principal periods. The first from 1443 to 1645 and the second from 1645 to the present day, present times. The first period is the time of its increase during which not only is found as the Portuguese, but the English, the Dutch, and the French dealt in Negro slaves, though chiefly for the use and consumption of the Spaniards and the sugar and tobacco plantations in the Brazils. During the latter period, these four nations were obliged to share that trade with the Swedes. Okay, now, you see the Dutch there. I showed you the clip or oh, I'm going to show it to you, whichever, in that movie called Them, how the Dutch was in America and did the cruelest things to us. These are all Christians, mind you. All right, let's move over. Mm, I'll start, I'm going to jump over to here. Pay attention. King John II in 1492 expelled all the Jews to the island of St. Thomas. That's Africa. St. Thomas is Africa. Island of St. Thomas is on the west coast of Africa, which had been discovered in 1471 and to other Portuguese settlements on the continent of Africa. So the Jews, which were black, was kicked out of Spain and Portugal and sent to Africa. And from these banished Jews, the black Portuguese, as they are called, and the Jews in Luango, that's Africa, who are despised even by the very Negroes are descended. So they were, we all descended of one black race, okay? But one group of us were called the Jews and we kept the commandments and the rest of us did not keep the commandments. Okay. So now let's go back here. Uh, before Africa was theirs, she belonged to the black man. It was not until the 15th century, that's the 1400s, when European powers entered Africa first for gold, then for slaves, that the face of Africa changed. Let's take a look. This was how Africa looked in the 1400s. Then later on, the face of Africa changed to this. The changing face of Africa, the Africa before the slave trade and Europe's colonial invasion looked quite different than the Africa of today. Let's look at that again. This is how it used to look. This is what it looks like today. Okay. This map of Africa circa 1450 shows some of the indigenous groups and original nation state boundaries. The Africa of the 20th century reflects the European, reflects European boundaries drawn in the 1800s during Europe's partition of and scramble for Africa. You can Google scramble for Africa. They'll show you all the European nations that were in attendance and who wanted what 
how Africa was divided up amongst Edomites. They all took a part. Mm. The price of a man. These were the Arabs in Mecca. All right. Horrors of the M Middle Passage. This is Deuteronomy 28, verse 68, about your sons and daughters, about the, uh, our people going into slavery on ships. We shall go into Egypt again with ships. Deuteronomy 28, 64. Here is a slave ship. Let's open it up. You see the bodies of men and women on this ship. This is Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. All right. Auction again, that's Deuteronomy 2868. You can see in the background a man, woman, and child being sold. Cash for Negroes. This is all Deuteronomy 28, verse 15 through 68. But there was something I saw, I want y'all to look at it. Oh, this is it. To make a slave. How does one become a slave? What is the process that turns a human being into a creature of self-hatred and self-doubt? Someone fully controlled and in fearful awe of another? Slaveholders developed a system. It was called seasoning. You hear these uh, Christians talk about this is your season? <laughs> dumb black Christians. It was called, I'm here, seasoning. It was a process under which strong men and women were broken, stripped of their dignity and tortured. Seasoning was a brutal system, a system that remade men in an image pleasing to their oppressor. I want you to see that. It made us in the image pleasing to their oppressor. It rewarded good behavior and punished bad behavior. It turned captive men into things, their captives into beasts. The wise slave master never took seriously the belief that my people were natural born slaves. He knew that African men and women fresh from the continent had to be broken in, forced to accept a subservient position. Slaves could never be trusted fully. Men wanted to be free. If slavery were to work, if strong men and succeeding generations were to wear the yoke of bondage, Deuteronomy 28, 48, their psychology would have to be altered. Let's read that part again. Let's zoom in right there. I want y'all to see it. Their psychology would have to be altered. That means changed. Our state of mind would have to be changed. They would have to be made to believe that they were innately inferior and accept slavery as their natural condition. The seasoning process was neither quick nor easy. It took months, years, generations to break my people's spirit. Slaveholders knew the process was essential. Without it, the slaveholding regime would fall. The seasoning began shortly after the arrival of a new shipload of enslaved Africans. Most planters selected trusted slaves, those who had already been successfully conditioned 
to train the new arrivals. Seasoned slaves taught, let's go up, taught, okay, seasoned slaves taught the novices the rudiments, uh, uh, the rudiments of plantation life and how to survive in the cruel new world. They taught them to communicate, to use the tools, to greet white men with lowered eyes. They taught them their new names, Wilsons, Dewberries, Rays, Dobson, Young, Washingtons, Franklins. They taught them their new names and made sure they understood the new culture and its values. They soothed new arrivals, shielded them as best they could from violent overseers, and tried to explain how they would never again be free, never again return to the country of their birth. They convinced the novices, the beginners, that compliance was in their best interest, that rebellion would result in death. New arrivals were not the only ones to undergo this conditioning. Each generation underwent a series of psychological and physical tortures to make them stand in fear. You can't make this stuff up. Here's an example. This is why people accept white Christianity or white supremacy, excuse me, so wholeheartedly. And they fight against the Israelites who try to free their mind, their spirit from the yoke of bondage. Black men and black women have become their own worst enemies today. Fighting against the truth that God is black. Christ is black. The angels are black. And that's right. The 12 tribes of Israel are black. And we went into slavery because according to Deuteronomy 28, verse 15 through 68, we broke the commandments of God and were made to suffer a life of bondage and oppression and slavery. So this part here is, is good as well, breaking us from within, breaking our minds. And they have done an excellent job and continue to do so to this very day. All right, brothers. All right, sisters. You saw it for yourself. You saw it for yourself. That was some good stuff right there. Repetition is the key to mastery. Remember that. Repetition is the key to mastery. Well, today we're going to talk about something that occurred last year or so-called last year in 2022. You know, the real new year doesn't start until spring, but in this wicked world, they have it starting in the dead of winter. So in 2022, 72, 72 countries participated in the 2022 Commonwealth Games, which took place in Birmingham, England. Over 5,000 um, athletes participated opening, in the opening ceremony on July 28th, 2022. Okay. Now, I want y'all to sit back. And watch the opening of the Commonwealth Games, which took place in Birmingham, England, and see how they observe. It's a type of Olympics. It is a type of Olympics. But watch how the what the opening ceremony consisted of. And you tell me if people do or do not worship the devil. All right. And I'll be right back. But of course, for all the color and noise, the characters, the invention. This was an industrial area. The black country, so-called because of all the black smoke thrown out by its factories, the furnaces that glowed red at night. There was a dark side to the Industrial Revolution, a darker side to the bull ring. There was. Female chain makers of the Industrial Revolution were underpaid and overworked. And not only were they responsible for making some of the chains used in the slave trade, but they too were enslaved by their terrible circumstances. And now, enter the bull. As the beat pounds to remind us of the relentless drive of industry, they drag into the Alexander Stadium. A beast, a bull. 10 meters high, heavily armored.
now scarred by past hurt and enraged by injustice, the bull breaks free and causes pandemonium. And in a parallel act of emancipation, the women break their own chains. Bulls were baited and sold here in the city century for centuries, and his armoured mask features the names of the chain makers embossed upon it from those dark days. can calm the bull, not Ginny Lemon, she's escaped in her balloon. It's no doubt going to be up to Stella and the Dreamers to try and halt the bull. The Dreamers have stayed, and they are about to offer compassion to a very scared icon of this city. striking images of the show so far. It's a very how to train your dragon moment. This is Stella offers friendship and compassion to tame the beast. Now don't go out and try this in a field, but in Stella's single action, we can see that we're all worthy of love, whoever we are, and whatever our circumstances may be. Yes, behind it all, the idea of breaking free from oppression and enslavement and of moving forward together. Admirably lofty aims here in Birmingham this evening. And so freed from their bonds, the women and the bull leave the shackles of the past behind. But the bull, once calm, is now injured again. Stella and our athlete dreamers call for a moment of reflection and of light as she and the bull call for a moment of reconciliation. All is stilled. It's time for the shards to work their magic again. Stella and the dreamers use them to call for a moment of reflection and reconciliation.
actually thought that was Jenny Lemon coming back. In fact, it's the chain makers that we saw earlier. And they lift away the bull's armor, the symbol of his enslavement and theirs. And he will be revealed as an iconic symbol of light, just as the names of the women chain makers who fought for their rights and better working conditions in the early 1900s will be lit up around the track and on the main stage tower. So together, along with Stella and the Dreamers, they will heal the hurt and they will lift away the bull's armor to reveal him as a symbol of light and love. Now free and at peace bull of Birmingham really is the symbol for this Commonwealth Games. He will, by the way, have a permanent place in the centre of Birmingham when these games end, and he will become the symbol of this theatrical and inspiring open ceremony and these games. inside the Alexander Stadium, a wonderful piece of art. As Hazel said, it will be in the city of Birmingham in the centre after these games. And the crowd moved by what they've seen. And the Bulls' starring role is not over yet. Don't be shy. You shouldn't be that shocked, especially if you live in New York City. Why do I say New York City? Well, in New York City, on Wall Street, they have Baal. Now, we are, people always say Baal. However, it's actually pronounced Baal. <laughs> That's how it's actually pronounced, Baal. You know what I mean? It ain't so much Baal, it's Baal, as in football. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Baseball. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Basketball. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know where I'm going, right? You know where I'm going with that. But that's what it is. That's what it is. Don't be mad at me. I'm just a messenger. I'm just make your money and get out quick. You brothers and sisters in the in the sports world, I know a lot of you got in there. You wanted to make your money. You got in there through ignorance. Now I'm letting you know what it's all about. Stop renewing your contracts. Okay? Make your money. Get out. Ask the Lord for mercy and get out. A lot of you make enough money. You could quit today if you so desired. Okay? I, I hope everybody understands what I'm saying. Now, bear with me. Bear with me. I am going to 2 Maccabees. 2 Maccabees chapter 4. Yes, I am. 2 Maccabees chapter 4. And we are going to start at verse, uh, just to get to the point, I'm going to start at verse 12. It reads, 2 Maccabees 4, verse 12. And he built gladly a place of exercise under the tower itself and brought the chief young men under his subjection and made them wear a hat. You know, like the baseball hats, that's what they did. Okay, now watch this. Now, such was the height. I'm at verse 13. Now, such was the height of Greek fashions an increase of heathenish manners. Heathenish manners. The word heathen 
is where the word, um, it means nations. That's what it means. Heathen means nations, as in Gentile nations. And increase of heathenish manners, meaning these manners were according to the nations, not according to God. Through the exceeding profaneness of Jason, that ungodly wretch and no high priest. Now, Jason was a wicked, wicked Israelite. Now, watch verse 14. That the priests had no courage to serve any more at the altar, but despising the temple and neglecting the sacrifices, hastened to be partakers of the unlawful allowance in the place of exercise after the game of discus called them forth. Now, the game of discus, y'all can see the image right there. It began, it originated with the Greeks, okay? Now, I forgot to make mention that the word gymnasium means, uh, refers to a place of nakedness because they exercise and um, competed against one another naked. Today, many of the ball players wear spandex to show their nakedness. You can see the Franken beans. The hell is this? Y'all know what I'm talking about. The hell out of here with that. Verse 15. Not setting by the honors of their fathers. Talking about the, the Levite priests. Not setting by the honors of their fathers, but liking the glory of the Grecians best of all. Our people like the glory of the Greeks best of all. That's why in the clip you saw some of our people taking part in that commonwealth game worshiping of Baal. okay verse 16 by reason whereof sore calamity came upon them for they had them to be their enemies and avengers whose custom they followed so earnestly and unto whom they desired to be like in all things so the israelites desired to be like the greeks in all things Am I lying? No. Check it out, people, today. Our people desire to be like the Greeks, the white man, in all things. I lie not. Now, you might be, it might be hard to tell with, with the man if he ain't walking down the street with a white woman, but you could tell pretty much more with the woman. Does she have a hair permed? Does she got uh, blue, green contacts on? Hmm? Hmm? Blonde hair? Well, you do have some men that do that, too. So I won't put it all on a woman. Uh, next thing you see who they married to is marriage is a, is a political institution. Tell, show me who you're married to. And I tell you where your allegiance lies at the end of the day. You may have some black people married to white folks, but they do have some type or form of consciousness towards their race. But think about this at the end of the day. They go home to that white man or that white woman. That's where their true allegiance is at the end of the day. Okay. I hope everybody understands what I'm saying. So the worshiping of that bull. Now, y'all know in Detroit, Michigan, they set up the, 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 the statue of Baphomet, which everybody knows of the devil. And they glorified, they happied with that thing. But the the bull, most people don't really see that. They see that symbolizing financial strength. That's what the Wall Street bull is about. That's what they say. But it goes back to biblical times with the worship of Satan. Baal was the name of the god who was worshipped throughout Canaan and Phoenicia in ancient times. During the Judges period, the practice of Baal worship entered Jewish religious life. Judges chapter 3 verse 7 NIV. The Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. They forgot the Lord their God and served the Baals and the Asherahs. The practice of Baal worship became widespread in Israel during the reign of Ahab. 1 Kings chapter 16 verses 31 through 33 NLT. And as though it were not enough to follow the sinful example of Jeroboam, he married Jezebel the daughter of King Ethbaal of the Sidonians, and he began to bow down in worship of Baal. First, Ahab built a temple and an altar for Baal in Samaria. Then he set up an Asherah pole. He did more to provoke the anger of the Lord 
the God of Israel, than any of the other kings of Israel before him. And the practice of Baal worship also affected Judah. 2 Chronicles chapter 28, verses 1-4, through 4, NIV Ahaz was twenty years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem sixteen years. Unlike David his father, he did not do what was right in the eyes of the Lord. He followed the ways of the kings of Israel, and also made idols for worshipping the Baals. He burned sacrifices in the valley of Ben-Hinnom, and sacrificed his children in the fire, engaging in the detestable practices of the nations the Lord had driven out before the Israelites. He offered sacrifices and burned incense at the high places, on the hilltops, and under every spreading tree. That's what it goes back to. Okay, for example, now we can read about it in Exodus and Numbers, but for time's sake, I'm going to go to 1 Kings chapter 18 and verse 26. 1 Kings chapter 18 and verse 26. This is when uh, Elijah was battling the prophets of Baal. Baal. And it reads, And they took the bullock. A bullock is a bull which was given them, and they dressed it, and called on the name of Baal, Baal, from morning even until noon, saying, O Baal, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered, and they leaped upon the altar which was made. So what I want you to see here, to wor the worship of Baal, of Baal, was they took a bull and sacrificed it. Later on in uh, other books, you'll read about them worshiping Baal and sacrificing children, okay? Baal was the, a bull, the symbol of a bull. It's the same symbol that when you read in Exodus, when Moses went up on a mountain and the children of Israel told Aaron to make them a god of Egypt, okay? For example, for example, when you go to Exodus 32 and verse 8, uh, let me look. It says, they have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf. See, a calf is a, a baby bull and have worshipped it and have sacrificed thereunto and said, these be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. So the Israelites, my people, our people began to worship Baal back then. Okay, that's what I need y'all to see. That's what I need y'all to pay very close attention to. So now watch this. Let's go from there. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 7 and verse 9. And it reads, Will you steal? Murder and commit adultery and swear falsely and burn incense unto Baal and walk after other gods whom ye know not. So the Israelites would light incense. Like if you saw in the clip I showed you, they were they were lighting incense and fire and flames and commemorating and honoring and bowing the knee to Baal. OK, that's what they were doing. That's what the people in Birmingham, England, were doing thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 27. And it reads, which think to cause my people to forget my name, it's the most high speaking, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams. Like, for example, in Birmingham, England, they have a dream of uniting all nations under heaven, having all nations. Don't that sound familiar to y'all like the Tower of Babel? All nations, all people gathered together against the one true God. Let's read it again. Which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. Ball, Y'all see that? That's what we are witnessing or that's what we witnessed in Birmingham, England at the Commonwealth Games. All right. I hope y'all understand that. Let's go to Romans chapter one. New Testament time. Romans chapter one. Bear with me. 
And let's start at verse 21. And it reads, Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. That's what we, we witnessed. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, Caesar Bojaeus, and to birds and four-footed beasts, like bulls. Four-footed beasts is Baal, for example, and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness, through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature, Baal, the bull, Caesar Bojaeus, which is the white image of Jesus, more than the creator, who was blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. This is talking about the LGBT community, lesbianism. Verse 27, and likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lusts, one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat, meaning right. This is why they get AIDS, gonorrhea, syphilis, things of that nature. Okay, I lie not, brothers and sisters, I lie not. But guess what? There is a remnant of men and women who will not bow the knee to Baal, the devil. Baal is another name for the devil. In whatever shape, form, or fashion he comes in, it is the devil. Make no misunderstandings about that. Let's look at Romans chapter 11. All right. And I'll start at verse... I'll start at verse two because it goes back to, no, I'll start at one. One, I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. Why is that question asked? Because there's a doctrine, especially today in Christianity. They got a replacement theology that says the church, the church replaces the 12 tribes of Israel. Now that's a lie. That's a lie. Let's read it again. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. So Paul lets you know that the 12 tribes of Israel, God has not cast them away. They still here. You can read about that in Jeremiah 31 verse 35. Okay. Now watch this. Verse two. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Wot ye not what the scripture saith unto Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. That's what we're reading about in the book of Kings. When Elijah had killed the servants of Baal, Jezebel put a hit out on him, and, 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 and Elijah ran for his life. Okay, he ran for his life. Verse 4, but what saith the answer of God unto him, unto Elijah? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal, that bull, Baal. Y'all see that? Verse five, even so then at this present time also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. This is why we ain't, we ain't stressing it. We know there's a remnant of you Israelites. You've, you may have not joined us as yet, but you're listening, you're observing, you're reading, you're studying. And the time will come when you will join us. We know that to be true. We know that to be true. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm going to just start at verse 9. And it reads, even him, the him here is the so-called white man. It ain't just the Pope. It ain't just Catholicism. It's all of them. The him is a race of man. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Didn't we see a little glimpse of that at the Commonwealth Games? Hmm? Oh, yes, we did. Verse 10. 
and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, because it is unrighteous to worship Baal. It's unrighteous in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth. Now, this is our people that join with them. The Israelite man and Israelite woman that join with the fashions of the Greek Greeks, because you just love them above your own people. Verse 10 again, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. What is the truth? God's law. You can read about that in Psalms 119. Let me get it real quick, because I know some of you are doubters. Psalms 119. Bear with me, I'm flipping pages. And verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. What's the truth? Thy law is the truth. One more time. Thy law is the truth. You see that? So let's read 2 Thessalonians 2 and 10 again. And with all deceivableness, meaning deceit of unrighteousness, that means sin, in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, the love of God's law, that they might be saved. See, brothers, see, sisters, we have to keep the commandments to show to God Almighty that we believe in him. You can't say you believe in the most high and you don't keep his commandments. You don't believe in Christ. You, you can't do that. Watch, watch this, watch this, watch this. Let's see what Messiah said in Matthew 19. Repetition is the road to mastery. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, the hymn is Christ, good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, meaning if you want salvation, keep the commandments. You see those last three words? Keep the commandments. So I don't know what you Christians are talking about. Y'all are insane in the membrane. You insane, totally insane. Okay, totally, especially, especially you apologetics. Y'all doing videos on Israelites day after day after day. But meanwhile, your people is in Birmingham, England, worshiping Baal, worshiping the devil. And you don't say nothing about that. You just so mad that this remnant of black people ain't worshiping the white man as God anymore. And that infuriates you. Why? Because you are of your father, the devil. Okay, let's go on back now before I get off topic. Second Thessalonians 2 verse 10 one more time. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, meaning sin, in them that perish, meaning those destined to die, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. This is why some of y'all worship the white man as Jesus. And some of you worship Baal in Birmingham, England. And you say, ain't nothing wrong with it. Ain't nothing wrong with it. I don't see what's wrong with it. Well, you're going by the, by the end of this thing, when, when destruction comes, you're going to meet your fate. Okay, you're going to meet your fate. Verse 12. That they all might be damned. What? Damned. That's right. Damn is in the Bible. Verse 12 again. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, who did not believe the truth of keeping God's law in Christ, of course, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You had pleasure in sin. You had pleasure in breaking God's laws. Yeah, that's some of you listening right now. Share this. Share the video. Share it. Share it. Share it. I lie not. All right. So with that, let's get to the reading of the shout out letters and donations, shall we? All right. been one of the longest northern kingdom trips the trips have been gradually demanding that they be longer and longer we hit these three countries in 15 days this is what the apostles this is what jesus christ would do okay this is what the prophets would do they would spend long seasons at these churches to the scattered israelites that were along and that's what's coming down the pipe
All right, let's get to the reading of the shout out letters. Well, the first letter is from a brother named Tychicus, and he writes, Dear Bishop, I thank you for the spirit of Christ, which is on you to bring this truth to the nation of Israel throughout the earth. Don't stop till we get it all. We all are with you. Praise ye the Lord. Most high in Christ bless you and family. Shout out Tuesday. Thank you, brother Tychicus. Tychicus. Tychicus, I pray I'm pronouncing your name correctly. If I'm not, please forgive me and show me how to correct my pronunciation, all right? The next letter is from Perry P. And it reads, Most High in Christ, bless Bishop Nathaniel. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for not giving up on the nation of Israel. We have so many leaders in Israel and it didn't go, and it didn't of, and it didn't, Mm, something use and it didn't up use use i can't read that those that last two words i can't get it go oh oh and it didn't go okay i got it i got it and it didn't go well we have we have also we have so many leaders in israel and it didn't go well with us but i see a lot of uprightness in you I watch a lot of your shout out Tuesday sessions online. It help out. It keeps me in the scriptures. I was one of the last graduating classes out of one West. Oh, okay. Before they moved to 1941 Madison Avenue. The whole world sees what you are doing for God's people. I guess you are the exceedingly great army that the Bible was speaking of. P.S. This is what I have for now. I'll try and send more later. Most high in Christ bless. Well, thank you, uh, Perry P. All praises to the Lord. Um, One West. That was the original school of the seven elders, which was uh, Masha, Arya, Yaquab. Uh, you had Lahab, Yeshaya, Kazak, and Shar. <clears throat> Did I forget anybody? No, that was seven, right? Seven elders, right? And uh, for lack of better words, the Illuminati used greed to destroy them. That's what I see. The Illuminati used greed to destroy them. Now, you see a lot of, you may hear a lot of stories, but I'm going to tell you all the truth. I'm not going to point the finger at one person because I know when uh, the Illuminati came and they offered a lot of money. Uh, into the school, which Masha had rejected, but the rest of them, all right. Anyway, I'll leave that alone. <clears throat> I'll just pray the Lord have mercy on all the brothers. That's my prayer. I don't speak ill of any brother at all. I just pray the Lord be merciful upon them, and the same prayer I have for me and you listening. All right, the next letter reads, Shalom, Most High in Christ, Blessed Bishop, um, Brother Malachi, uh, what does that word say? Uh, use these arms as you see fit. Okay, thank you, Brother Malachi. All praises. The next one is a card from Brother Thomas R. It reads, thank God for your teachings. I have learned so much. May God bless us and guide us that we endure to the end. Yes, sir. I pray that we all endure to the end. The next one reads, thank you, Bishop Nathaniel, IUIC. Love shout out Tuesdays. Continue the good works. Most high in Christ bless Roberto R. Thank you, Brother Roberto. All praises. The next one reads, Shalom, Bishop Nathaniel. I'm writing this letter to you, hoping that you get last month's money order because you didn't say anything on Shout Out Tuesday. Well, <laughs> I'm sure I did because this is what I do. Uh, if I don't have, if I'm not able to get to the post office one week, if I wait another week, there's like, hundreds of letters, and I split them up into 25s. Okay, I split them up into 25. So yours may not get read. If not this week, then maybe next week. I'm not sure. But um, <clears throat> that's what I do because uh, to read 100 letters on one show, it's, it drains me. Y'all know I'm not, a, I'm not at 100% yet, but just pray for me. Keep me in your prayers, all right? I'm going to keep on keeping on. I'm going to keep on fighting, all right? So... You go on and say, so I'm sending you my arms in Booster Club money order. I like the music that Original Royalty is putting out. And, uh, and, 
Love Royalty Duo. All praise. Shout out to Royalty Duo. Shout out to Original Royalty. My grandbaby loves to hear, what's this word? Passioner, Passioner, and the moon. Passover on the moon. Oh, Passover on the moon. And the moon. I can't. All right. Tell them to keep up the good works. I will keep all of you in my prayers. Thank you so much. May God bless you and your families and your homes. Thank you, SC. P.S. If you're not getting them, but God knows I'm sending them, I hope you are getting them. Yes, I, the initials SC, I do remember. SC, yes, I do remember the initials SC. All praises. All praises. The next letter reads to shout out Tuesday. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Bishop Nathaniel, you and your wife, and all the deacons and captains of IUIC for training up the 12 tribes of Israel, men, women, and children, with the anointing of God, teaching us how to be holy and faithful to God's words. Oh, and I do want to say this regarding that, what you just said. The most I did say in Isaiah, it's a, a light thing that we should be his servant, but growing up in a sinful world, it seems somewhat difficult. But the Lord said in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, he will not put more on us than we can bear. He won't allow us to have more on us than we can bear. So I need all you brothers and sisters to remember that whatever you're going through, he knows you can handle it. He knows that you are able. All right. So the letter goes on, it says, and how to keep all God's commandments and how to walk in God's laws. My prayer every morning for our God is to bless and keep and protect Israel United in Christ's family with his great, powerful and mighty hand and to give strength to endure patiently by keeping the faith and hope in God's word until the end of Jesus Christ returning to deliver us from all the abuse and oppression of our enemy. I never felt so alone until I seen my strong, wise brother of the IUIC on YouTube, fighting the good fight of faith, 1 Timothy 6, 12. And thank you, Bishop Nathaniel, for welcoming me home. Back to our God. Uh, as a 67-year-old black woman from the tribe of Judah. <laughs> okay, you left your cell phone number. Okay, uh, I, I tried to put on... Uh, this is from Linda C., December 14th. Linda C., thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, I'll have uh, someone reach out to you. I see your cell phone number is here. All praises. Uh, next letter reads, Shalom Bishop Nathaniel, Most High in Christ, blessing your house. So always please receive the arm, these arms from David H., Best friend of 10, over 10 years, and keep him in your prayers. Thank you, sir. From Sister Jediah, Jediah, JJ. Mm. Mm. I want to say something about this. Jediah. Mm. Mm. You know, I'll, I'll keep my thought to myself in case I miss... Staken. Mm, 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 mm. Sisters with a male best friend. You know what? I'm going to let y'all, you put in the comment boards. I'm going to leave that right there. But all praises, all praises. I pray the Lord bless us and keep us. All right. The next letter says, Shalom Bishop, Most High in Christ bless you. All praise to the Most High for the wonderful work you and all the prophets of the Most High are doing, gathering Israel back together. Thank you all. I pray peace and strength of the Most High continues to be upon you all as you wake up Israel from their sleep. Bishop, I'm fighting these spirits with reading four chapters, praying, studying, applying, and fasting regularly to endure. Please keep me in prayer as I continue to pray for the body of Israel. All praises. Well, definitely. Oh, this is for Millie, Sister Millie. Well, Millie, we all fight in that good fight. So you're not alone. And I'll say this about reading the four chapters a day. Do it, do it, do it. And listen, there are YouTube videos of Bible chapters. Like the other day, I was reading, uh, listening to the book of Jeremiah. I think I listened up to 10 chapters. So like me, it's, it's difficult. My reading 
I got these bifocals, or I call them bifocals. They ain't bifocals, but that's what I call them because I ain't used to wearing glasses. But anyway, it's easier for me to listen to the chapters be read. Some That's how I learn. Some people are not like that. Um, now, regarding prayer, I want you all to read Psalms chapter 55, verse 17, where we are instructed to pray uh, evening, morning, and noon. That's right. Evening, morning, and noon. Remember in Genesis chapter one, where it says the evening and the morning were the first day. The evening and the morning were the second day. The evening and the morning were the third day, so forth and so on. According to the Bible, the evening begins the next day. I know America teaches us that it's 6 a.m. in the morning or 12 midnight. No, they say 12 midnight starts the next day. Well, no, when the sun goes down, that begins the next day, according to God. That's why I reference Genesis chapter one. So that evening, uh, let's say sun goes down at six. It doesn't get dark until, let's say, seven-ish. That's when you begin the evening prayer. Then morning, when sunrise, let's say 6 a.m., anywhere between six, seven, eight, you send the morning prayer up. Then at noon, 12 noon, we all know that you send the noonday prayer up. So let's do that. Let's do it. Let's do it. We all can do it now. Let's shake that lazy spirit, brothers, sisters, shake it, shake it, shake it. And let's send up them prayers to the most high. All right. The next letter reads, dear Bishop Nathaniel, the greatest prophet on the earth today. Well, Lord knoweth. <laughs> the work you're doing for God is amazing. Those of us with ears to hear and eyes to see are with you 100%. We stand with IOYC even unto death if it's God's will. Thank you, Peyton P. Well, all praises, Peyton. I can see you've been listening to them glasses. You got even unto death if it's God's will. Uh, that uh, tribulation is going to lead to many of us being put to death in these last days, whether it's through pestilence, through uh, famine, or through beheading, there's going to be various ways. But I don't want to scare y'all on Shout Out Tuesday. I'll leave that alone. All right. The next letter read. Okay, this one says, for your eyes only. Thank you. So I'm not going to read this one. This is from Sister Cheryl F. But I will not read her letter because she asked me not to read it online. So brothers, sisters, you know how I love to say let's all of... Oh, what, the, what is wrong with me? What is wrong with me? Wow. I'm sorry, y'all. I forgot to read the shout out donations. What? I'm getting old and cranky. Y'all forgive me. Forgive me. Let's give a shout out to our sister, Maxine S. Maxine S. from Bloomfield, Connecticut. That's right. We want to give a shout out to you. Uh, yes, I'm going to make sure uh, the deacon gets that. We want to give a shout out to Isaiah, brother Isaiah. That's right, Kevin. I know who you are. All praises. Uh, we want to give a shout out of thanks to Barry H. of St. Albans, New York. Oh, I lived in St. Albans. That's my same zip code. Wow. This. Hey, all praises. Hey, anyway. Hey, hit us back up, uh, Barry H. Tickiest tight. Tai Chickas. I can't pronounce your name. You help me out here. Let's give a shout out of thanks to Pelalaya. Shout out of thanks to E. Boatwright. Shout out of thanks to... Hmm. I think that's... Hmm. M. Initials are M.W. From your Hannibal, Missouri. Okay. Shout out of thanks to Thomas R., Shout out of thanks to Roberto R. Shout out of thanks to Johnny D. Shout out of thanks to SC. Yes, SC. See, I got it. SC. Shout out of thanks to SC one more again. Shout out of thanks to John LB and Eloise T of Goodwater, Alabama. Shout out of thanks to John B and Eloise T of Goodwater, Alabama. Alabama. Shout out of thanks to James H. of Utah. Shout out of thanks to Linda C. Thank you, Linda. Shout out of thanks to Cheryl A.F. of Fresh Meadows, New York. 
Shout out of thanks to Rita B. of Richmond, Virginia. Shout out of thanks to Scott B. of Canton, Ohio. Shout out of thanks to Roger B. Jr. All praises of Illinois. Shout out of thanks to P. Brooks of Dalton, Illinois. Shout out of thanks to Abaya Bot I of New York. All praises. Shout out of thanks to D.H. Thank you, D.H. Shout out of thanks to Peyton P. Shout out of thanks to, I think that's the first name. Looks like B-O-L-Y, Bali. The last initial, I can't read this. See, some of y'all, y'all do send in donations. You ask me if I got it. If I cannot read your handwriting, it's hard for me to discern whether or not I got it or not. All right. I'm not hating on you. I'm just saying the handwriting. I don't write well either. I write like chicken scratch, as my mama used to say. <laughs> Shout out of thanks to R. Davis. Shout out of thanks to Jonathan D.R. of Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. And last but not least, shout out of thanks to Sister Millie, Millie D. All praises. Y'all know how I love to say, now I can say it, right? Let's all of us be healthy, let's stay faithful, let's stay focused. But most of all, let's all of us stay in the spirit. Most high in Christ, bless. Love you all. Shalom. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Is you. And finally, my brother, be strong in the